Hey everybody, welcome to the Real Estate Lab. Happy Friday. We have a conversation today about the market. I think that's on everyone's mind, so we're just going to casually talk through it. And we have a guest today. Her name is Ashley. She is with Urban Soul Energy. And the reason why we have her on today especially is because we talk, as realtors, about the market a lot. But we don't often have people on that that are experiencing it or have friends that are experiencing it. It's different with clients versus with, uh, you know, just, just people that are around and, and not always watching real estate. So I, I wanted to make sure that Ashley had a chance to introduce herself and then we'll go into the topic. Ashley, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey guys. So my name's Ashley. I own a company called Urban Soul Energy. We are a solar consultant and sales firm. We just help homeowners switch to renewable energy. We work in California, Texas, and New York. So all over the place, we've got some experience with different homeowners, what they're kind of dealing with in the market and what they're dealing with with their rising cost of electricity. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point specifically that, uh, you know, we'll talk about it more, but when people are looking to purchase solar, that's going to change based on the market conditions. So why don't we start off with uh, JJ, Randy, do you have anything that you want to open with? I know you do. Ladies first. Ladies first. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody that kind of checks out my channel routinely definitely knows my opinion that there is no bubble to be popped here. We certainly are experiencing a very strong shift in the market, and I think that it's all for the better. We needed to have that cool off some for many reasons, um, but lots of data and evidence, in my opinion, and the things that I like to read show that this is not the same structure that set up a housing crisis for us uh, 10 plus years ago. Yeah, I think that's important to note that a lot of people are looking back at what, like 2012 and then the 2008 and they're, just, they're different um, catalysts for what's been going on with housing. Now, I have seen a lot of talk about global, right? We've seen a lot of global markets crashing. Let, let me take a moment and ask you this question. What do you think is a crash? Like what percentage degradation or what percentage means crash to you? And this is just open. Well, I guess, yeah, let me kind of do a quick follow up with what I was just saying. Now, when it comes to what the world is going to do and everything else involved as far as stocks and the war and those types of things, <laughs> no idea what can come our way. I just know that the main culprit is certainly not the housing market being too hot. Got it. Speaking of too hot, JJ, why don't you tell us a little bit about what was going on with your uh, your listings, your most recent listings? Yeah, it, I thought this was really interesting, so I'd like to hear what what y'all think. You 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 could put up a few listings on a on a on an April weekend, right? We're going into May. Yep. And one listing, white hot, nine offers received, turning away offers. Let's say even in the four hundreds, East Georgetown. Then I have a East Pflugerville listing, which I thought would maybe do something similar. We priced a, a little higher, but expected more. And the thing about Austin, things are super instantaneous. So it was interesting because we got two list price offers, Okay, which was, it sounds good, but when you're used to a lot more activity, it sounds a little slow. It's kind of weird. You know, I have to tell the seller, hey, I know we expected you know, tens of thousands higher, but it's not here. And then a week and a half later, we're not accepting of these two offers either because of that thought process. Uh, 30,000 over list comes into the picture. Mm -hmm. So we take that. And the fact that it took about a week and a half is really odd for, in my experience, what do y'all think? I, yeah, a week and a half for, for 30,000, for a list, for a, an acceptable offer, acceptable to your sellers. That's acceptable a little bit of time. Seller, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, and when you hear that, what what do you think about? A, a week and a half. Oh my gosh. It took <laughs> that long to sell a house. What are we talking that about? Sounds, to me, I mean, as a, someone from the outside, that seems super fast to me. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't have any experience with that. I just think like, man, if I could sell a solar system in a week and a half, especially virtually, I'd be pretty excited. Sometimes it takes me two or three weeks to get something done. So. Oh no, me. we we're, we're quick here. In I like Austin. We have been for since what, 20, would you say 17? Pretty quick. 
Yeah, yeah, it's been picking up. And speaking of solar, here's another thing I think what's what's important about watching the value when it comes to labor, supplies, transportation, gas prices, equipment. Mm. I mean, is, is do you see this actually in the solar industry where That's a good question. Let's say you lock That's it in now, question. you might be better off. Yeah. Kind of like housing, kind of like a lot of like cars, there's a lot of different industries kind of going through this, right? Like a shortage of supply. Yeah, we're definitely seeing in the solar industry a shortage on labor and a shortage on supplies. And that's increasing, of course, demand from all the solar companies, which is in turn, of course, affecting customers. They're getting a little bit higher prices than maybe they would a year ago. But at the same time, I think the thing to bring into the conversation is it's also happening parallel to with the electric companies. The prices of their infrastructure is also going up. The prices of gas for them is going up. So it's, I think I'm actually seeing more people looking into solar now than I was when I first started in the industry four years ago. We're going to circle back around to the actual topic, but I also wanted to mention, do does everybody see these warnings about uh, ERCOT and the energy grid this weekend? I follow more real estate. Like I'm kind of, I don't understand well, the cars and the electricity. Let me, let me just market. say, it's supposed to be a hundred degrees both days and it's, what is it? What is it? May, early May. And it's just supposed to be taxing on the grid. And anytime, you know, they can sensationalize it, uh, they're going to do that. And so that's, those are a lot of headlines that are happening. And that makes me wonder if people are spiking on solar, if people that are, are moving here are prepared or going to be prepared. That's the kind of thing that hit us when Snowmageddon happened right? Just yeah. not knowing what to do. And there've been still a lot of people still re uh, relocating. This is a pretty simplistic way for me to think, but I'm just, it pisses me off whenever we <laughs> start hearing that we're not going to be able to handle AC. Cause it's like, yeah. well, yeah. now we've been doing that yeah. the whole time. We should know how to cool the houses off. <laughs> Absolutely. But when you, you know, when you uh, increase your population by what, 60%, Bingo. That's what it is. It's they not don't, that they're not don't, used to it, so they're cranking the, <laughs> they uh -huh. don't know the routines that you have to put in place. <laughs> I want to make sure we comment on these comments. So uh, Mark says, Ian is still aligning his Starlink internet dish with the Borg, or I mean Tesla Collective Mind. Yes, my, <laughs> uh, my cars had like multiple software updates. And if I can put a, if I can put my Starlink satellite on top of it, I would. <laughs> we'll just keep that in mind for later. Ashley, you want to read this one about John S. from John S.? The only bubbles I now see in the foreseeable future here in Austin is for my four-year-old playing in the bubbles in the bathtub. <laughs> That's good. And I hope, I hope more people feel that way. What would you say, JJ? Those are good bubbles. Yeah, great <laughs> bubble bath bubbles. Pick it up, somebody. Uh, my friend just messaged me a house in Seattle that sold in three days that was only 2,000 square feet with 3,000 square foot lot size for $1.15 million. I'm sure the market is slowing down, but that is crazy for sure. Yeah, that was uh, um, – in any reports that you've seen, is Austin hotter than Seattle today? Because, you know, they shift all the time. What do you yeah, think? and if, if if we're talking about Austin, because these are all it's all relative to the town. Like, are we the next? Like, you throw your LA's up there, your New York Cities, your Seattle's. If we're next in line, it is what it is. But if we're not, then it's not gonna. Then we're we should be a little bit more careful about being bullish about the prices. So, do y'all think that's where we're at? As well, I do. I have two listings coming up as well. And what I tend to like to do is look at what the neighborhood's gonna, what the list to sell price premium is, and I take that mm -hmm. off, you know, from the mm -hmm. CMA. Um, and so now, with the pretty strong shift happening right underneath our feet, I'm kind of encouraging my sellers let's come, let's come a little bit closer to the price that you're expecting to get, rather than taking that entire premium off just a little bit though. And then we're, we need to focus on actually doing a maybe a full on, not a full on make ready, but more than what we were talking about before. I mean, I think before it was more convenience and you can just throw anything up there and it'll be fine. So we don't need to spend that money. But now I think it's good to put some more focus and effort into that and really pay attention to what we're going to price it at because you don't want to be the fool that's up there two weeks into your listing or yeah. but a week and a half really saved you with that. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know. Like maybe somebody will still come. 
It was an investor so, too, but I don't know. It's just really interesting. It's, stuff. But it's a good thing it was still there. That's great that you, you got you, what you were supposed to be getting. Just looking at some quick numbers, uh, I noticed that in the last week we've had 240 new listings and 200 closed listings. And, you know, there's pending and, and under contract and back on market on there. But just think, there's a delta of, uh, wow, about 100. Oh, no, no, about 50, 40 to 50. So that's it. I think that's good information to keep in mind. Also, let's pull this up. This is a chart that you like to talk about, JJ. Let's keep it, uh, you no, know, let's share some information on it, but not, not spend a lot of time on it if you're okay. Yeah, so regarding... Inflation and interest rates are definitely what people are concerned about. And to, to put the math out there, what you have here on the vertical axis is interest rates. So you could see a 3.75 go all the way up to 4.75. On the horizontal axis, you have the purchase price. Let's say this is a buyer or seller, right? The, the price that the buyer is going to get in at. And then the, the shaded area is a buyer that's looking to stay within the same interest rate or the same mortgage payment. Sorry, the same mortgage payment, like in the 1800 range. And you could see if a 3.75 interest rate bumps up one point, the value at an $1,800 mortgage payment goes from 400 all the way over here. Y'all see that number? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it you you originally were planning to buy a house for four hundred thousand. Now you can only afford a house for three hundred and sixty thousand for that same monthly number mm. because of a one percent interest rate increase. Yeah, so, so when people are hearing mean, interest rates, this is this is it. Um, so I think people I wanted are to thinking, ask, like, do you think there's going to be a negative ten percent on housing value because of the math here? That, that's what people have to figure out. I just don't think it's going to be quite like that. I think certainly they're partial. There's, there, there should be some of that. But I just still feel like the intense demand that's coming to Austin from the companies that are here and the amount of people moving here and still the limited housing. I mean, the inventory did double compared to last year, which is great. But whenever you actually look at what that means, it went from you know, a quarter of a month's inventory to 0.75 months of inventory. So it's still like, there's still nothing really out there and there's a lot of buyers. So I think it would still more err on the side of just pushing people out rather than affecting the prices that much, 10% with what your, with your original question was. But there is yeah. the additional problem that Texas is having of those property taxes uh, <laughs> continuing to also push the price of the house, you know, the, yeah. or the, how much it costs monthly to afford that house. And lenders are going to be using um, old numbers for that to qualify for this year. So I'm trying to make sure my buyers are aware that there's an increase coming for them as soon as next year with whatever we choose. So before we uh, dive deep into property taxes, I want to ask you, Ashley, when you're, when you're talking to your friends or even looking for yourself to purchase or mm -hmm. uh, like rent, how do, how do these numbers hit you? You mean like the interest rates, the the overall yeah. cost of everything? Yeah, like like what are you seeing what, when you're looking at like headlines? Are you seeing all these interest this and interest that, or is that not even coming across your radar? I'm not even seeing that so much across the radar. It's more just everybody talking about the rising cost of a house now. So like for example, I'm from Maine. I want to buy a house back home in Maine, and I know that's not the market we're talking about, but I'm looking at houses there, and they're two hundred thousand dollars more than they were two years ago. I think mm -hmm. that's what people are talking about is just the overall huge increase in apps in general. Now, do you have any friends that were, or even yourself that were planning to purchase and now they're not, or they're like reconsidering things because of what's been going on? Yeah. I've got a friend out in Kerrville. They just moved back down from Maine and they're looking at houses there and all of the houses in their budget were very old rundown kind of, you know, not very nice houses. And she's like, I'm not paying $400,000 for a house that also needs $100,000 of rehab on it as well. Mm -hmm. So they just decided to rent an apartment for right now, which is still pretty expensive. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the renting and, the, and um, the apartments in relation to 
this. So this is one of those articles where it kind of hit me with a, a shock. And Randy, you and I were talking about this a little earlier. I didn't know that there was such a, a rise in people wanting to relocate downtown. I mm -hmm. didn't know uh, workers were being called back to work because like we've mentioned, it's- <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yay traffic. There. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're right, traffic. I'm just excited that we're welcoming the old life back a little bit. That's all. <laughs> Seriously. It died so, downtown the past couple of years. So how do you think this is going to affect both rent and uh, purchases? Rents are going to go up, I think. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think well, so. Well, there's not I enough housing, people... so they're going to have to rent. <laughs> there's only one winner. On a house. Well, that's it. If people want to work at Meta <laughs> along along the lake and Project Connect isn't done yet, Project Connect being all the rail lines that uh, now it's double the cost. So I don't know that that's going to happen real soon. Um, like the timeline for all that, people are going to need to, to commute or live closer. And right now the housing prices are just, you know, much, much, much higher than people originally anticipated when they first moved here. So. I feel like this will really kind of strain or, or highlight kind of the great divide of old Austin versus new Austin, because all those people coming to work for Meta and Google and, and go, go back and fill up those towers, they can afford whatever the rent is going to be down there. And the people that are not going to be able to unfortunately afford living and renting down there are our musicians and our bartenders and what kind of really makes the, the center, the city center thrive and be colorful. Um, and that's kind of just a really huge affordability crisis that's been coming for Austin for a few years now, but shot off like a rocket in the last year. I want to get back to. Oh, Go I was going to. I was going to ask a question. What do you guys see? Is this like development for on the outskirts of Austin? Do you see things kind of popping up more and more city centers, more you know, artists and musicians setting up shop outs like right on the outskirts of Austin, or how do you see that? That is an interesting question. I do know that it's a very popular idea to do more city centers. They are building up the more of the domain area. There's Indigo Run and all of those domain projects are popping up just about everywhere. What's that one? Four Rivers and everything. So it's great that we have those spreading out. And I think it must just be inevitable that eventually our artists and restaurants and everything will, will make their way out there. I mean, there's mm -hmm. they have to find something else to do. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's an interesting question. I think yeah, I love the, that question. Like the the three hundred thousand dollar buyer, that's where your value is going to be. You just lock it in in Gerald or I don't know, Salade. I, I mean, I'm still visualizing it, but it's going to have to happen. They're going to have to take a piece of that Austin culture and develop a commercial space and like cool coffee shop in Salado or like Liberty Hill that has like the guitar player or something. It, it's it's going to have to spread out. Uh, affordability is just causing different so, people to go different places. I think one thing that's important to note is that people that are relocating here, if you want, if you're moving to Austin, you're moving here for a reason. And if you want to preserve that culture and that little bit of oddities and things like that, then keep that in mind when you're starting your coffee shops or when you're you're building your, your small businesses. Don't, uh, you know, try to, try to make it trendy, try to make it on theme, do something fun, do something different. Um, I just know that a lot of people have been doing that ever since the pandemic, right? They've been starting stuff up. I want to get to these comments just uh, so we're not missing them. So Kevin asked Ashley, if you work with uh, solar United neighbors for group solar sales. I don't Kevin. I'm actually, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. I'll look it up though, for sure. Kevin, that's a big no. Uh, let's see. John S. was talking about Seattle again. So I feel like our trajectory is in line with where Seattle was 15 years ago. The only thing that might prevent the price appropriation might be our high property taxes. Mm -hmm. Seattle's property taxes are only 1%. Well, Austin's property taxes are not 1%. Does anybody, want to, does anybody want to share for those who may or may not know what our range of property taxes are? I mean, it's, yeah, it's all in the two to three, two to three space. Two to three percent. Better than Houston. No offense, Houston. No, really? No. Houston goes up to like four and a half, four percent. 
I guess it just doesn't matter because it's so dirt cheap over there. <laughs> or it used well, to but, be. But they're, they well, actually just the have a meeting of like 400,000 too. So it's not the case anymore. And there are some places that are, uh, you know, it's the 80%, 80-20, right? Like 20% of them can be lower or higher than our two to three range. But uh, let's see what else. That's interesting that John asks, uh, Burrit, yes. You got to be very yeah, be creative true. about your investment angles. Yep. Who so wants if to, we're we should share that mind. real quick. Whoever wants to give a description. Oh, Burr. Yeah. I, I always say B B triple R. <laughs> I like but that. I it, the Burr is funny. <laughs> buy it's, rent. Buy rehab. Rent yeah. And rehab. Uh, mm -hmm. Refinance. And then refinance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. rent yeah. refinance. So the the idea is that you just move into a house, you fix it up, you do what you need, and then you do it again, and but you keep that house. And it's one way that young investors can build a, a solid portfolio at uh, an, like an FHA price, right? Like, or a lower uh, cash out of hand. Mm -hmm. Or would you uh, burr? Like, would you burr Central Austin, or were you would you burr Manor or Elgin? Like, oh you're gosh. supposed to do like Manor, Elgin plays, just really middle of the road, three twos, min you know, median square footage. It's supposed to be <clears throat> plug so and I'm go. Gonna, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I just found, I didn't find a client of mine found um, some duplexes uh -oh, that are family. not on market. So we've got duplexes going up, which that's kind of a rarity, right? Like we have 1980s duplexes, but we don't have a lot of current new mm -hmm. build duplexes where you get both sides. So there are a few pockets where they're starting to do that, both north and south of uh, the city center. And then in the city, there are a few off market multi uh, quadplexes and like a lot of stuff is still moving around. Us what these are maybe huh? behind the scenes. Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, it's all, that's the thing. It's all kind of behind the scenes. Hmm. So it's interesting. Well, the developers interesting. are, yeah, there, there's some developers that are just selling some investors and just like liquidating like that. Like yep. there's some bulk purchases happening in the background there. I want to get to Mark's question. He's asking how the traffic is now that we're returning to office slowly but surely. And is there an increase in solar installs as people buy electric? to compensate for driving. God, you always have such good questions, all of you. He has the tech stuff down. It's a solid question. I mean, it's for you. So yeah, so definitely seeing an increase, I think in solar just in general due to the price of electricity going up and because people are buying more into electric vehicles. So one of the markets I work in is California and out there, um, solar is huge and electric vehicles are also huge. So all the time people are saying, hey, can we add our consumption for an electric vehicle into how big you'd big build our system. And so I think that that's becoming more popular here too, as people are noticing prices of gas are going up, they need to be able to get around more, there's so much more traffic, et cetera. So definitely I see a rise on that. How about you, Randy? What do you think? As far as like the traffic and just anyone you've talked to about solar, if you have, same with you, JJ. Honestly, solar discussions, I mean, I want solar, and I, but I haven't had many discussions on it. I, um, mm -hmm. I would say for traffic, the, certainly it has ramped up since people have been going back to the office. At my, the typical hours that you knew about before are here again, like Friday around 3 p.m. Forget it. You, you took too long. Don't go, don't go out <laughs> there. Uh, and then Monday through Thursday between 4, 4 and 6.30 p.m. is also pretty congested. So, so. I was supposed to be at a closing and, and doing this podcast from that closing. I had a handful of closings today. Congratulations. And, well, thank you. Um, but I couldn't make it happen. I was like, I just, it, it doesn't make sense because of traffic. The time yeah. is very different than uh, from what it used to be. I feel like traffic's like still picking up at three. Is it kind of, people are definitely driving around a lot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All over, all over. And it's getting warmer, right? So you also have that effect. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of lot more electric vehicles on the road. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, so the other thing I'm going to talk. Go ahead, JJ. I was going to. I was curious if y'all see appreciation in the future, and how much do you think maybe from like central to suburbs, or would you would you still get your your buyer to fight for this? I do Quite know cool. nationwide that like the seven major um, forecasters, so like. 
NAR and MBI or a, excuse me, they all have said Better. that they expect mm -hmm. about eight to 10% appreciation to finish off for this year still, even, and that's, that's the most recent, even after the interest rate thing happened, um, the one that happened just as recent as Wednesday. So I still see that happening. So I honestly, my buyers are kind of frozen. I'm like, what should I do? And it's like, if you can still afford to do this, I understand that it's like catching up to you, but interest rates are just going to continue to rise and the home prices are just going to continue to rise. So you would rather own in that situation than be a renter because no matter what, the cost of living is increasing. So I recommend pushing on if you can. I want to come back to this asking about the just the solar installs in general. So one thing I want to mention, Mark, is if someone's planning to stay in their home for long term and they're purchasing electric vehicles, I could see that being a huge draw. But if they're not going to stay... And we've talked about this on the on the podcast before. There are some people that come here for, let's say, political reasons, but they have the flexibility to go wherever they want. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the migration is going to be permanent for many of them. And also, we have a lot of out-of-town investors that just bought here but mm -hmm. never plan to move here. So mm -hmm. in that case, I don't know that those people would care at all about the solar costs because they're not the ones paying them necessarily. So I, it all factors in. Um, Random Bra says, what about Round Rock? What about Round Rock? I think he's talking about um, appreciation. Yeah. Or I tax. like East Round Rock. I think there's still appreciation value in East Round Rock. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. West Round Rock's a little high, but it's great. And I have to apologize about the comments covering your face. I, there's a way to like have it automatically slide up. I'm gonna change that next time. So it doesn't matter that musicians can find a 300K property if next year they pay property taxes on 600K. Oh. It's a thing to watch out and be careful for. Yeah. Actually, um, if you bought a house for, let's say, half a million dollars, 500,000, and then your property taxes doubled, and your monthly mortgage went up by like a thousand dollars a month. How would you feel? Oh, my heart. I feel like I would be. Can I swear? I would be pissed. Um, I think that would that would be outrageous. You think you're locking in something, and you're gonna have a good payment. You're gonna set it for your bills. You're gonna know what you're gonna be paying in your budget, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. it goes up a thousand dollars. You can see that being a pretty big financial hit for some people, especially so because. Heads up. Expected. A lot of the um, property taxes have, you know, existing exemptions on them. And so when you're shopping and you look at it and you're like, OK, and that's what your lender is going to use to predict your payment. And then yeah. you, you sell and the ownership changes and that that value gets wiped clean and you start over at market value. And it's like, oh, my gosh. So like one example I have is my is, is a property where it was like six hundred thousand we purchased. But then. You know, it was a it, the exemptions have been on that property for 20 years, so that's why it was so low, and then it got adjusted to over a million dollars. Like, didn't expect for that to happen. Yeah, I think that is one of the most important points that I've heard in the last year. <laughs> like, just for people to really latch on to and understand that when you're shopping and you look at sites like Zillow or wherever and, and Open Door and Redfin, and you see the taxes, like the amount of taxes. Mm -hmm. That means nothing. Yeah. It's the tax rate because the amount of taxes that that person's paying is based on when they purchase the home and based on uh, whatever exemptions they may have, not and, what you will pay. Oh my gosh. Very good. And unfortunately, it sounds like at least for this year, like you, like my solution would be use the amount that you're offering on the home and use that to calculate your taxes. But also, unfortunately, I'm hearing through all of the stories of people currently protesting, like, I, I just bought my home last year at 900000 and you have it valued at a million. I'm protesting. And TCAT says, we're not um, using your sale price from last year. We are, we are applying the appreciation that has happened since that close date. So even that is not a safe space to try to use your um, purchase price as an estimate. It's just kind of a I don't know. It's just kind of a strange time uh, with Texas property taxes right now. And I'm hoping that some ideas and solutions have, can come forward of how to adjust because this is not sustainable. This is going to piss Texans off. This is what's going to happen. So. It, that, I, I, mean, I say yeah. you, you, if you calculate it right, you should nail it on the purchase price. But I understand that it's it's a lot and some some speculator might do something else. But that's that's part of the equation. Mm hmm. 
I just wanted to mention this. Uh, Random Bro says he owned in Houston and he didn't like it very much. Um, how do you think current politics, without spending much time on it, I want some of you to answer this, uh, will affect long-term migration? So we know that there is a mayoral race, but there's also the governor, right? Like, so all, there are lots of poli uh, political changes uh, mm -hmm. coming up real soon. So how do you think that's going to affect the migration for Austin area, greater Austin? Spit it out. Certainly the mic. I know this is like uh, treacherous. <laughs> <laughs> the migration to Texas has certainly turned it from red to purple. And I rather like purple states. I think that's a healthy balance to get both opinions in. Um, and then it will purple be very area. interesting to see what red the, state. what was that? It was the area. It's like yeah. purple area, red state. It's like yeah, a yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. don't think. The, as far as the governor race, I, I don't think that'll change. I don't think Texas is ready for that change to happen just yet. I think that'll continue to be Governor Abbott. So, um, but for the mayoral change, I know I'm, I'm very interested to see what happens with that. What do you think, Ashley, for Austin proper? Yeah, I mean, I think that, like she said, it's definitely making it turn more purple. I personally like that as well. I think it gives the ability for both parties' views to be seen. Um, Someone else said in the comments, people are really angry about it. I, th I think that's also could yeah. also be true. Um, yeah. You know, one thing that I've kind of learned from coming from Maine to here is that there's different viewpoints here. And I definitely appreciate some of those differences. And I like that it's getting a little bit more mixed. What do you think about this, JJ? Kevin says, mayor first, baby steps. Honestly, I mean, you have like Republican, Democrat, mm -hmm. capitalism. You know, there's like Abbott and there's like Elon Musk. And I think if, if anyone's bringing jobs to me, I, I pay attention to who I think's really doing the moving and shaking. And if you have like an Elon Musk and a Google Facebook, that's just jobs to me. I just like that. That's as clear as I see it. Now, and you saying that makes me remember an article that just came out. I wish I could reference who who wrote it, but they were saying a poll went out that Texans are um, frustrated and feeling angry about all the growth and that it's really disrupted everything for them. And 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 so that new opinion has actually uh, gone into the campaigns and people are going to start focusing on how do you answer that problem of like, of course, everybody pushes for growth at first. And now now suddenly maybe the feeling is it's too much and um, people are feeling upset. So. You, you got to think about it logically. If somebody is, so people are driven by fear or hope, right? So if somebody is mm -hmm. afraid of change, it's generally because they're comfortable where they're at, right? And they don't want it to change. They moved here so that they could, so it could stay, you know, small Austin. But then there's also the people that have been able to um, maybe take advantage of the growth. They don't want it to stop growing, especially like investors that get these properties and get tenants in. They don't want to they don't necessarily want it to stop growing because their investments, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, depending on what type of investments they're looking for. Same with homeowners. They want to see their numbers, their, their accumulative wealth grow, right? But they don't want anything around it to grow. Like that doesn't, it, you can't have both <laughs> very well. Oh, anyway, yeah. so what else do we have? Um, Lily Bell says, I'd love to sell my five bed, four bath, three car garage on Greenbelt, five minutes to Lake Travis, but where would I go? Uh, I'd love to buy it. Wherever you want. You. <laughs> I will give you my RV, <laughs> and you can Whatever have whatever you want, Lily. Holy goodness! Yes, that right now is um, Nirvana mm -hmm. for many people, yeah. right? Can we show that listing? <laughs> yeah, listen, <laughs> don't. Yeah, uh, you well, know what and you can also, do. Also, the change in the market uh, kind of opens up the opportunity to where there's there is an answer for that you probably could now line up your sale and buy whereas before that was impossible and anxiety ridden so that is you know that's a good point you know what you could do you could uh get into a like plan for a new build mm -hmm. and you know do it that way um take your time there are a lot of people that'll give you lease backs anyway uh let's see what else you want to read this no, ashley read this I purchased a new home last year and value went up to 300,000 more than what I paid for. My taxes are so high. What are options besides submitting closing statements? Well, you we should protest those taxes. We did a great uh, interview with somebody uh, where you can have, you can do it yourself and save on that commission, or you can pay the commission. And I hear five stone is really good. 
There's another one, Protax, I think. Protax. People really like. Those are like very two popular ones too. Mm -hmm. But it definitely went, check out that uh, video that we did before because protestingpropertytaxes.com is a great solution to do it yourself. Yeah, I, I've actually had that call. I probably had four of those calls just this past weekend about mm -hmm. should I protest? And it's mostly because um, like some of these people that got into new builds, especially they mm -hmm. they got in at such a low price and then they've seen, you know, one, two, three hundred thousand more. And they're like, well, do I risk it to be able to save? And I'm like, you have a homestead. One one gentleman has um, like he has a disability exemption and all that. And I was like, I don't know, man. Are you risk adverse? I wouldn't I don't know if I'd risk it in that case. But that's just my opinion. Kevin asks if my RV is a cyber cyber truck. Not yet, man. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> JJ, you want to get take this? Random bruh. Maybe an odd question. Mexico announced they won't be running their railway to Canada through Texas. How will this affect housing, if at all? Ooh, love that question. I think my my question to that question would be, what type of railway? Is it travel or is it freight? If it's freight, hardly at all. I mean, maybe manufacturing or commercial, um, which does uh, help housing a little bit. But if it's travel, that could be something important. Does anybody know that? I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but you're right. I mean, that would increase tourism if it was more for travel, which in not, turn, tourism I mean, grows the market. Like we need that in Austin, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll read this one. Kevin Malins Malinson. As a good Samaritan, they can sell at a loss to a qualified future Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. John S. says, we purchased our home in Cedar Park December 2020 for $5.95. We closed last month. So that means new construction, waiting it out. Our neighbors uh, received their appraisals for close to $900,000. Our taxes are going to be crazy next year. Yes, but now you can put a homestead exemption in at, like the day after you close. So do it, please. Mm -hmm. Please and thank you. That's a new law in Texas as of a few months back. So, Chris asks. Yeah, what are uh, the implications of the higher interest rate on the housing market? I was planning on getting an FHA loan since I was a first time home buyer, but now the interest rate is. And then, how do I get to the rest of the question? I'm so sorry. It is so high, I'm no. thinking no. no. So, he's thinking of not because of the FHA loan or because of the interest rate. <sighs> What do y'all think? Uh, well, here's what one thing I think is it's going to be easier. I don't know if easier is the word, but um, if the market is cooling, at least FHA buyers might have a better shot. <laughs> Let me start there. Because for the last yeah. few years, last couple of Not years, already. it was mm -hmm. rare for an FHA or VA buyer to have an accepted mm -hmm. contract mm -hmm. unless they went new build for a number of reasons, uh, mainly because they can back out almost any time. Keep fighting for the house though, Chris. Yeah, I was I like, why, why, keep what else are you going to invest in? That's also the other question, right? Any, yeah. And this is for anybody, yeah. what else would you put your money into? How, yeah. how The cost of housing is going up for you, whether you're renting or buying. So mm -hmm. I certainly recommend to continue to buy if you if your if your numbers allow you to and you can qualify. And then I, I think I would even if the, if the FHA loan is what suits you best, then I think now mm -hmm. that's a benefit of the rising interest rates is that it's creating a market for you where you can now submit offers and possibly have it accepted after some patience. You know, it's not going to be. Uh, one and done. It'll it'll take some time and some and some planning and a good realtor to help you out with that and a good lender. I'm going to pull this up. Luis says, I didn't truly understand that statement at new market value. He's talking about the taxes. So I just want mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody reads this and really lets it sink in. It like we probably say stuff about taxes every episode. It's right. Just so unbelievable. But, yeah. Like it goes over you know, things that I don't understand deeply might go over my head, right? And I just really, really pay close attention to the taxes here. He said he learned the hard way. And that's, you know, that's part of playing in the real estate in Texas. Oh, man. 
Uh, Random Bra asks, why Amazon continues to build distribution centers in the greater Austin area? We want some R&D facilities. And do they have solar panels on it? He didn't ask that, but I'm curious. <laughs> I don't know. I've actually, I'm not no, sure about that one. They should, though. Center of Central Texas stuff? So I think with Amazon, like do you, yeah, I, do you think it's just because of proximity to all the other major metropolitans and still um, there's so much land? They get all the land they need here. You can't go into the center of Dallas and get anything. Yeah. I do feel like we're in between all the cities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are. We're, we're a central point. That's another reason. I'm surprised Austin didn't grow faster sooner, honestly. It was a secret. We didn't have an economy. Like uh, the other Texas cities were oil. Yeah. Like oil uh, R&D, uh, not R&D facilities. Uh, Meta, a.k.a. Facebook, they're building, is it in Gerald? Or Temple. It's in Temple. They're building a, a warehouse for $200 million. Data center. I think it's $800 million. Yeah. yeah. This is a really good point. Luis says, you could always refi later when rates are better, but definitely cost, pardon me, costly for a bit. True story. Very, very That's solid. Fact. That is a fact. I want to thank Mark, Mark all K. the time. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, Friday beers and welcome Ashley and Randy. And Ian bike riding airbag install fund. You know what? I did my first like actual push up earlier this morning since my hand was broken. So uh, I can do it with my fingers. I can't do it. You know, it's that that tension. So thank you. Appreciate you. Um, Chris says thanks. Kevin says a motel. <laughs> All right, uh, we do have to start wrapping it up. We're well over time. But Ashley, what are your Final thoughts, closing thoughts, if you have to share anything with anybody that's watching. Anything. Okay. Um, I mean, can I put a plug in for solar? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I guess. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that we're all talking about the rising cost of everything. There's a rising cost of housing market. There's also the rising cost that nobody's talking about with the infrastructure that happens in those areas when there's so many people going into a new area. It's also affecting the electrical grid. And those things need to be updated, which means it's getting pretty costly. And those costs get passed on to homeowners. So just like in California, the price of electricity is nearly double what it is in Texas. But now all those Californians are coming here to Texas. They're going to impact the electrical grid. So even though the price of, of um, you know equipment is going up with solar a little bit, it's still less than what the electric company is charging people. Mm -hmm. So just kind of when we're talking about rising costs, I think that's an important factor to buying your house is how are you going to pay for your electricity? Mm -hmm. For people that have relocated here and weren't familiar with what happened during Snowmageddon, there were a lot of electric companies that had these ridiculously high bills. Oh, and the current governor said, uh, yeah, well, you have to pay them. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you had a bill for twenty five hundred dollars for three days of no power, then you're still required to pay that. Keep that in mind, unless you have solar. What else, JJ, <laughs> Randy, anything else? Uh, I Just another, as a thank you to Ashley for being on here, I have another good plug for solar, which is I uh, had the uh, the blessing of being able to swim in a friend's pool the other day, and uh, it was kind of kind of cold. The water's a little still not quite ready for us, mm -hmm. but they have um, solar, on their roof that powers heating up their pool so that they're not having to spend cool. electricity to have a warm pool. And I thought that was <laughs> genius. So that's, awesome. that's so cool. Yeah. I will never forget that you just said that. I know. Oh, I know. Goodness. It's like, well, that's obviously the way that that should always be done. So, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. JJ, what do you have? My takeaway. I, I liked how, uh, when we talked about the market, Randy was getting straight to like a comparative market analysis. Like there's a lot of blanket statements that get put out there, but sometimes you got to study that specific neighborhood. You got to understand if there's a lot of buyers in that neighborhood or not, because that, that's the true, you know, present temperature. And same thing with Ashley, if, if going back to an analysis, look at your electricity bills, like it's going to take some time to figure out your financial decision making, right? You have to look at the numbers. You have to talk to specialists, someone like mm -hmm. Ashley, realtors like us, you start breaking the numbers down, you start expecting taxes to go higher and then you can make your decision right you do the objective homework make your decision and that's that's what we're here for and that's why this podcast is out there so do do some homework and all the numbers will make sense 
I love that, man. Um, I know this podcast, this particular episode was called Will the Housing Bubble Burst in 2022? I think we've kind of um, said that in Austin, it's not the case. I think that's the general consensus. And in fact, I've had so many uh, investors and uh, past clients that are, you know, they just own a home here and they are absolutely not slowing down. The investors aren't really slowing down. In fact, they're, I would almost say they're ramping up. They're like, I need to hurry up and get in if it fits their their criteria. budget criteria. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also homeowners that have purchased, I've seen many of them try to figure out ways to enhance their value. So I had one uh, good conversation. They were asking, well, should I put in a pool? Should I do a, a three car garage and all that sort of stuff? Because they want to they know that the appreciation is going to continue to rise and they want to capitalize on that. So I don't think many people are seeing a burst, at least in 2022. Remember, this is a long game, people. Mm -hmm. Long game. Mm -hmm. You're not timing the market. Thank you everyone for joining and we will see you next week. Let us know in the comments what you'd like us to talk about. We do have an agenda out uh, items, but um, if you have something that's really, really fun, then maybe we can tackle that. Thanks again. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Bye, guys. Everybody.